Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week I have a little bit of a cold, so I hope you'll excuse my funny sounding voice. Well, on this week's episode, we have somebody that I really enjoy looking at his site, and his name is Dave Dugdale. So Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. I really appreciate it. Well, you bet. Dave is known as the guy that started learningdslrvideo.com, and uh, Dave is a self-proclaimed non-expert. So Dave, I'm going to let you tell people about your site. Tell us a little bit about how you started it and why you started it. Well, about a year ago, I had a HD camcorder um, where everything was in focus and I was, creating a, a <laughs> I was creating a spoof on an Apple TV commercial. And in this commercial, um, one of the shots, because I love the backward engineer um, stuff and learn a lot from it. And one of the shots they had was this guy being interviewed and the background was all out of focus and I wanted that same type of shot. Um, but I couldn't do it with my HD camcorder. I was like, why can't I do this? And so I did some research and that was about the time that the uh, Canon T2i came out. And so I bought one and then, and then I just started learning about, um, you know, depth of field and all these other shots that I was getting that I couldn't do on my camcorder. And I was thinking, well, you know, I think a lot of other people are probably in the same boat. This thing is kind of complicated to do. It's not just a pick it up and, and uh, hit record and everything's in focus and it's, it's wonderful. It's just one of those things where, um, you know, it's, 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 it started out as the kind of a brain dump, basically. I would, you know, run a bunch of different tests, like highlight tone priority, on or off. Should I leave it on or off during video? You know, and I would create the test and I would put it up on the site so I could go back later and say, oh yeah, you know, this one looks better than the other in that lighting situation. So, and then after a while, people would start to um, comment on my blog and actually visit my blog. It was kind of amazing. It was like, wow, people are actually watching this. And then they would start commenting like, Dave, why don't you try, you know, instead of trying to focus that way, use the quick focus method and you press it halfway down before you hit record, you lock in on the subject and you can get the focus a lot quicker. And especially for when I'm filming my kids, it's, it was a great tool I didn't know about. I read the manual like once before, but I never knew about that. So. It, you know, even though I had, um, you know, it started off with one way, it's been actually very, very beneficial. I've learned a lot from the people that visit my site. It's kind of why I started it. And also I, I started a, an audio podcast and I watched these people on Vimeo and they would create these awesome videos. And I'm like, how did they do that? Kind of like your show. And what I would just do, you know, call them up on, you know, on Skype and I would talk to them and, mm -hmm. and interview them and I would share it with everybody else. Um, and so it, the site's been an awesome learning tool. Even though I'm sharing, I'm getting a lot of back in, in return. Yeah, and so this site is all about learning how to shoot video on a DSLR. It's pretty amazing. And so uh, I, I love the part that you look at the blog and immediately it says, I'm not an expert. I have my Canon Rebel T2i and I'm trying to figure it out. Join me as I go along. And that's what you've done. And so uh, lately, you've really advanced from trying to figure out how to focus to you're doing a lot of color correction stuff. You've been uh, working with audio as well. So tell us um, a little bit about some of the things that you've learned that I think are key to shooting video on a DSLR. What are some of the, the big takeaways that you've learned over the past uh, few months? Well, one of the biggest things is when you grab one of these cameras and you're coming from a background like I am, coming from a camcorder, um, especially my first lens I bought was a 50 prime 1.8 um, and this lens like everything I mean one of the first challenges I had is like how do I get this thing to focus if I have an interview subject and I'm at 1.8 he just moves in and out a little bit and boom he's out of focus you know his nose is in focus and his eyes are out of focus so I quickly learned about focus was a big challenge for me and so I, I quickly learned about you know you know stepping it up to like 3.2 or whatever to get a better depth of field. And then the other thing was um, audio is a big problem, you know, because the mic that's on the built into the camera doesn't work very well in terms of the automatic gain control that they have built into it. So that was a big challenge. So I, I created a, a hack that I'm actually using right now that kind of injects a, a sine wave tone on one channel and then suppresses the AGC. And then I can get a nice mm -hmm. clean audio using an external microphone like I am now. Um, 
Another challenge is what I'm facing right now is coloring or color grading, color correction, whatever you want to call it. Um, right now, you know, I'll go on Vimeo and watch some of these guys create these awesome, you know, they basically create a mood with the color that they do, um, they put into it. So right now I'm trying to work on picture styles and understanding how to shoot with a flat picture style and then later in post color it, um, you know, and also helping, you know, create a wider dynamic range because of some of the picture styles, like what I'm shooting right now, actually I'm shooting standard, is very contrasty and, and you lose a lot of information in the blacks. Um, it just crushes the blacks for you. And in some situations you don't wanna do that. So I've been using, I've been experimenting around with a lot of flat picture styles and that, that seems to be uh, the direction I'm heading any, anyway is, uh, I don't know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a big challenge and um, I don't know if that, that really answers your question. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it, it does. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that you're talking about here is uh, pretty amazing to me because if you rewind in time back to, I think, May in 2010 is when you first got your Rebel. None of that, I, I think, would have made sense to you. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. None of this. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, you know, once the depth of field, I didn't even know really what depth of field was before. I had no idea. All right. So if there are other people that are uh, like you were uh, about a year ago that have no idea uh, what all this stuff is, but they want to learn. Um, and some of the things that you were just talking about seem a little confusing to them. Uh, is your site a place that lends itself to those types of people learning that stuff? Where do they get started at learningdslrvideo.com? Well, the way the site's structured is, you know, you, if you go to the home page, it's basically a blog and you'll see like the last nine videos I've done. And then you've got, to, I don't know if people know this, but you can click the more button at the bottom or, more posts. I've got over a hundred videos. So if you're just getting a camera, I'd almost suggest going back to the very beginning, you know, like when I was getting frustrated on focus and exposure and understanding, you know, the 180 degree rule with uh, the shutter. Um, you know, and I've had people email me, they'd, they'd come back and they'd say, you know, where do I start? And I'm like, well, you know, just start from the beginning and they'll email back later and say, oh, I didn't even realize you had all those videos on there. Well, that's awesome. And uh, you're not a professional photographer, so the kind of gear that you're using is not really the uh, most expensive gear. Um, so can you walk us through the, the, uh, the gear that you do have um, so that you know, others that are viewing can get an idea of what you're able to accomplish with what you have? Certainly. The, uh, the Canon T2i 550D, I think is what it's called in Europe, um, is about, I think it's less than that. For the body only, it's about seven or $800. Um, that's what I have. And, and, you know, if you want to go much higher than that, probably with a camera like what you have is like a, maybe a 5D, which is probably two or three thousand dollars. So it's it's kind of a mid entry level uh, camera. Um, and then I have a 50 Prime. This is the first lens I bought. It's a 1.8. Um, love the lens. And, and a lot of people told me when I first started, just get a 50 Prime. It's a great one to learn on. And then I bought a, a 28 to 135 and uh, the zoom and I got kind of frustrated with that because I couldn't I couldn't go all the way down to 1.8 I could only go down to like uh, I don't know where it goes to like f-stop uh, 5.6 or something like that um, and because one of the things I like to do is shoot in low light without any lights if I don't need to um, and having that ability to stop it or take the aperture all the way down to like 1.8 is uh, an amazing thing and you know I own a, a, a Rode video mic um, I don't own any filters yet. I want to buy some polarizers and ND filters and some other stuff on my, uh, on my list. But that's pretty much what I've got so far. All right, well, let's talk about what's next. So what do you see on the horizon for learning DSLR videos? What are some of the, uh, the things that you're asking yourself that you hope to learn in the future? To be honest, I don't learn in a very linear fashion. I jump around all over the place, depending on the project that I'm working on, because I do a lot of... Um, videos that people don't even see. They're like training videos for some of the software products that I develop on my real estate websites. I have a lot of websites. And uh, so it depends. And it's like like the spoof video. Do I love doing spoof videos a few times a year because they're great for just tearing them apart. And, and usually I'll run, run across a scene that I want to do. And I'm like, well, how did they do that? And and then I'll have to learn how, I, how to do that. And so I don't know what's, to be honest, I have really no idea what's coming up next. <laughs> so that keeps it exciting for everybody. 
Well, we're about out of time, so thank you so much for joining us today, Dave. Again, uh, your website, learningdslvideo.com, is out there. So thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you very much. And I just want to say thanks a lot to you because I've learned a ton off of your, your videos. The last one you did with uh, the 5-in-1 reflector, which is great. In fact, I have a question for you. You did a lot of different shots, like with the gold side, the silver side, the diffusive side, in shade, in sun. Um, but you really didn't say which one was your favorite. Which 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 shot or which technique did you like the best? Well, you know, the the um, for my taste, I I usually love the silver side of that reflector because it's really punchy. I like high contrast. Um, or using the inside of a five in one reflector to really just give nice soft diffused light. I generally don't use the gold and the uh, the gold silver side because. Um, I'm usually shooting more than just somebody's face and uh, when I tend to use the gold side what I get is a, a really gold uh, face and then the rest of the body looks a little bit pasty and white so I don't really like that. So if I want to warm something up that's uh, more than just a head then I'll use a, a much larger reflector. So uh, it's the silver reflector. So um, take that for what it's worth. I hope that helps. Yeah, th thanks a lot. I mean, I. I've done it with my kids where I've shined the silver on them and they're like, whoa, and then I'll put the gold on them and they're like, you know, their eyes don't squint or get watery like you talked about. But I just want to say thanks a lot for all the videos. And this community is so awesome in terms of sharing. And a lot of people are very passionate about what they do. And it's, it's, it's just a great time to uh, pick up a DSLR camera these days. It absolutely is. And I agree about the community. We love all the stuff that we get on our uh the comments on YouTube and Vimeo and uh, on the Learning Center all over that place. And it, it's rare that I don't learn something new every week because somebody's uh, giving me more information. So again, thank you very much for joining us today, Dave. Well, thank you. You bet. Now remember, if you want to see more of Dave's work and learn all the stuff that he's learned and follow along in his journey, it's learningdslrvideo.com. And to see uh, other articles, uh, some of the things that Dave talked about in this video interview. You can look at those at the Adorama Learning Center. And if you'd like to ask me a question about photography or suggest somebody that we'd have here on how they do that, you can do that by sending me an email to askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me this week. I'll catch you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.